I know what you're thinking. Dr. Cho, that lecture was friggin' long. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, but it's because uh, this entire lecture is friggin' long. Uh, but anyway, hey, you're getting your money's worth. Uh, so picking up last time where we left off, this is the big data ecosystem. These are the elements that go into big data. And so next we're going to talk about big data and how it relates to marketing. And what it comes down to is all of marketing is about finding customers, getting customers, and growing customers. And so uh, data allows you to get to the five V's. And so by knowing this kind of information and knowing more, what this allows you to do is know your customer better. So you can upsell, resell, you can personalize and have precision. And the thing you have to be careful about is that you can only take in so much information. And so the mechanisms involved in all this is what do you, what is it that you try to do? Well, first you have metrics, then you get data, and then you want to, based on that, continually improve and uh, control. And so what drives all that is your five V's. So in the short term, you're interested in discovery and sales, and that's about the next year. Medium term, you're concerned about what markets am I getting into with my customer loyalty. And longer term, I'm trying to discover new customers. And all three of these things are taking place all at the same time. And so, as we see, data is more than about uh, sales. And so the issues that come up is, is my data siloed? Meaning, is it all insulated or is it integrated? Uh, do I have the right scale of infrastructure? Can I filter out the noise? Can I clean it? What kind of no uh, data types do I have? And am I overfitting? Meaning, uh, am I getting too much data that's not really useful? And so, examples of algorithms. Uh, this is more, f uh, I'm not going to really go through this. Uh, what I did is give you some examples of algorithms that people are, are using in data sets. Uh, so there's map reduction, a priori, and that means you, you use rules, page rank, what's most important, k means or knn, which means cluster analysis, decision trees, and sport vector machines. And so for those of you who are more like IT or GIT majors, you're probably more interested in this than everybody else. But I just want to give you an idea of the kind of algorithms that are out there. And again, these lectures are designed to be uh, references. So later on, if you ever get stuck, you can come back and look at this. Uh, so we're interested in learning. Uh, the three different kinds of techniques uh, are cluster, supervised, and unsupervised reinforcement. And so, uh -huh. In a cluster, I'm looking at 8 to 50 attributes. Uh, segmentation is based on proactive design, meaning that uh, I already know what I want. We've talked about uh, clusters in the past that looking at different functions or different variables, which are call, also called discriminants, uh, tells us clusters are based on area. As you <laughs> can see a uh, hierarchy can get quite complex. They use it for credit card fraud. And essentially, they've come up with an algorithm based on frequency, recency, and monetary. And that's that how often do you do things? When does it happen compared to the current time? And how much are you spending? Uh, and so they look at that. Sometimes it's very simple. <coughs> Dr. Cho <laughs> uh, got a phone call from his credit card company, and they asked him, like, it was like buying a leather bustier in Bangkok. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, no, I'm here in Phoenix. And he said, that's what we thought, because 20 minutes ago you bought gas. Uh -huh. So this is what supervised data is. And I have all this data. And so what is this data related to? And so either I'm going for classes of people. I could classify my data that way. I could use regression, which is fitting it. And I have to remove my outliers. And so what it comes down to, though, is my data has to have something to hit. And so as we talked about, supervised data uh, is about I have something in mind where that data is going to go to begin with. And so in terms of supervised data, these are the different algorithms. Uh, can I use the past to predict the future? That's what I'm trying to do. 
I'm looking at my topology of the data have a braid stem. And so uh, an example is looking at people's patterns of people who buy Lamborghinis. Uh, there's a halfway reasonable chance that they're all going to kind of act the same way. And so this is where, again, you're looking at things like recency and frequency uh, clustering. Again, we take what exists and try to find patterns in it. We look for associations, and then we see what features we can extract out of the data. It's going to tell me that people are going to be interested in it. And so these are some of the uh, unsupervised techniques. Uh, I pretty much summarized it for you. Again, uh, I'm not really expecting you to remember it, but at least you have an idea. And then the third kind of uh, data systems are reinforcement or recommenders. And that's that you can predict what somebody else's preferences are. And so they're based on filtering uh, content, and that's what you're using at the history of preferences. And hybrid is you combine the two techniques. Uh, and so the process, again, is to collect and clean it. Using these algorithms, you, you figure out, you extract the features, you classify it, basically you bin it. And so uh, the last part is, in this process of binning your data and sorting it, is it what the data tells me, or is it about my own biases? And so in the next lecture, we'll talk about the last leg, which is how do we implement big data?